gen, but can sometimes be a really big commitment to buy as a as a first item, and you can actually be a lot more impactful in the early fights, especially with how Ten crazy an ability remaining. the swarm is. Like this thing is just insane. Five but, seconds remaining. All right, fanatic, not very tanky on the whole so far, so they do probably need a little bit of front Reserve line, uh, and maybe even a little bit more lockdown to go along with the lineup. So maybe looking at something like a slardar that would mean that they're running slardar in the off lane as opposed to position four where he's a little bit more commonly found so uh... but i think that's still okay for them it does it's already it's really really good with weaver would give them some roshan potential as well um, the Weaver already kind of covers some of the tower damage, so they don't necessarily need to pick up too much more Radiant of that. Oh, and I, oh, I thought I had the game still muted, but never mind. We, we clearly have game sound. Uh, and just another face rush hero here for Fnatic. It's going to be the Ember Spirit, so that's going to be played by QO more than likely. It's going to be Miracle on the Weaver. Um, I would guess what remaining. DJ on the, the Bounty Hunter. Febby going to be handling the Crystal Five Maiden, and then we're remaining. just looking... For the Ohio here, actually, wait—is it? Reserve time. Is it DJ who's drafting? Did I just misinform the chat? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think I think so. Anyway, a badden is the grab for clutch gamers. All right, going to be relying mostly on the Monkey King back. for uh, initiation and setup. Also, a very a run at you hero is going to love these early skirmishes that Fnatic are looking for. Of course, the Photic Shield is great at the spelling off track as well, so that's definitely nice. Uh, also, you know, remaining. get people out of some frostbites. Gives them a little bit of front line, but remaining. could be a bit difficult against the Fnatic lineup since they are just all re they're all pretty elusive and, and pretty fast. So you do need to get in there with the lockdown, but the Rubik, of course, helps for that a little bit as well. So it's not a bad Rupert game at all. There's plenty of great spells to steal. Crystal Maiden, you're never unhappy with what you get. Weaver, you can pretty reliably get the Shikuchi. Eh, Bounty Hunter, I mean, remaining. can be a little bit difficult to steal the track, but you're not unhappy with getting Five a Shadow Walk for an remaining. instant initiation against the Ember. And, you know, Ember, steal a Flame Guard. You're a happy Reserve chappy. Time. Oh, is the, is the title not up to date? I thought I updated the title. Maybe I didn't. Alright, well, hopefully it's hopefully it's set now. Anywho, we got a jug ban. Clutch Gamer is definitely looking for their one position here. In terms of what that is going to be, well, with the jug ban, maybe they consider something like the Life Stealer. Um, Troll Warlord is really trending over in China at the moment. Could be alright, though a little bit difficult to play against the Ember, perhaps. Uh, though he is pretty fast, so doesn't really care as much about the bonus moves between the track, kiting him out, which could be pretty good. Also not too bad with the, with the Monkey King, either. And there's going to be a Darkseer ban from Clutch Gamers. Alright, so for Fnatic, I think the Sardar is still a decent option. Um... Maybe something like a centaur could be all right, though. I think they might want something in the offlane that puts on a little bit more pressure with the bounty hunter. Ten Definitely want remaining. that bit of extra lockdown. I would be shocked if their offlane didn't have a stun Five of some variety. Remaining. But which hero exactly it's going to be, I'm not. I'm not sure. Reserve time. Slark. Turn and to the Clutch pick. Gamer is just going to end up going for the Slark. Alright, I mean, the Crystal Maiden and the Bounty Hunter are reasonably easy pickoffs. There doesn't look like there's going to be a crazy amount of pressure on the Slark in the early game. He's got a decent, Ten he's got decent seconds. zoning supports is really what I'm getting at. He's got the Rubik, he's got the Monkey King. Five so. seconds remaining. Looking alright on that front. Reserve time. But for Fnatic, what are they going to go for? I think Tidehunter could honestly be okay, but that's adding a really long cooldown to their lineup that they might not want, because right now they are not cooldown reliant at all. They can fight non-stop, any opportunity that they're given. Uh, it's kind of the same thing for Clutch Gamers as well. They're, their longest cooldowns are, are not particularly long, so it could be dangerous for Fnatic to put themselves on this timer where they can only fight when the when the ultimate is up, and I feel like that's something that they just don't really want to do. 
either. So, what do they do in that case? Is there is there some weird offlaner that I'm forgetting here? I feel like they're just gonna end up picking uh, end up picking Slardar. But whether or not they're gonna be that happy with that, I'm not so I'm not so sure. Because then the Abaddon is going to be, like, you're, you're not even going to get that much value out of the amp damage because of the the Abaddon. All right, all right. This is this is a little bit weird. That doesn't make them very cooldown reliant, which is good news. Uh, of course, the ultimate is really nice to have, but I think they're mostly just picking the Venomancer here for the lane pressure. He, If he does get forced out of the lane, he is going to be able to jungle pretty quickly as well, especially with the... The CM Aura helping him out, sustaining his mana pool for the Plague Ward spam. So, uh, Jungle Veno can actually farm insanely fast. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the exact Midas timing is, but I think you can get like a, a sub six minute Midas if you get lucky spawns and you don't get interrupted too much. Though that's exactly where the Monkey King is going to be coming in. So, we'll, Ten we'll see. Remaining. The Venomancer could also just be looking to pressure Five the lane. Slark is remaining. pretty easy to bully, and if they get the Bouncy Answer down there as well, you know, potentially get some easy kills on the Rubik or the or the Monkey King. So a couple of different ways to play it. I think the Venomancer's uh, starting items will tell us a little bit more about what he's really looking to do in this game. But it is actually going to be Febby on the on the Bouncy Hunters. So DJ going to be playing the Crystal Maiden. They're both probably going to be roaming around a little bit. I think that's the nice thing about having the Weaver in this situation, is that you don't really mind leaving Miracle on the safe lane alone, and it frees up the supports to go and put pressure elsewhere. Especially against the Lina, who's going to be probably pushing the wave out mid a decent amount. Might be somewhat vulnerable to, to a couple of ganks coming in here and there. But yeah, the, the early game for these two teams is going to be very important. In terms of where we are for this tournament, this is the MDL SEA qualifiers. Uh, it's only just started today, I believe. This is the very first match. So there is... how many qualifier spots? I think it's only one qualifier spot. Let's have a quick look here. I should have I should have actually checked this. Yeah, so there's one qualifier spot. It's a double elimination best of three bracket pretty much the entire way through, I'm, I'm sure. Or I'm pretty sure. All right, Venomancer's got some boots first. Looks like he's going to be contesting the lane here. Scoots down in position. Does not have any wards on him, so he's just kind of scouting for the time being, it looks like. Febby just going to be running his way out. We got Kyo on the Ember Spirit. As mentioned, Miracle's going to be on the Weaver. Man the fuck up, or DJ is going to be on the Crystal Maiden. For Clutch Gamers, we have Hana on the Abaddon. XD or... Um, who's this? So this is Armel on the Lina, Fly Solo of course on Rubik, Gabby is going to be on the Slark, and finally we have, to pretending to be the Courier, uh, the Monkey King, which is Boombax. Alright, so let's see here. The Abaddon probably going to do okay in the offlane, I would guess. Doesn't really have a ton of vision to work with at the moment. They've actually just planted a Radiant Observer Ward over here. Which looks like it actually gives... Oh, it's not the most amazing vision in the, the, in the world. Begins. I guess it's alright if you feel like you're going to get pincered from the side. Oh, it does right. allow the Abaddon to play a little bit further up in the lane. But the fact that it doesn't give any vision through here is a bit concerning for him. Uh, and he's also being scouted out in the lane by an Observer Ward right now. Venomancer is still just chilling here. Going to spot the Monkey King as he makes his way past. Looks like Monkey King planning to start out in the bottom lane, just zoning a little bit for the uh, zoning a little bit for the Slark. Get him off to a good start. Make sure that he doesn't get pressured too much. Meanwhile, Bounty just body blocking or helping block the wave mid a little bit. And looks like he's going to lay down some immediate harassment on this lane as well. Do they get the better block overall? Yep, they do manage to get it over onto their hill. And Febby just going to... Wander past, see if anyone's waiting behind here, and then gonna start putting some pressure on. They've got the Orb of Venom as well. This is doing decent damage, but Fly Solo, somewhat anticipating this, is gonna be wandering in as well, and ends up being a 2v2 on the mid lane for now. Venomancer actually was hiding in the trees for a reason. Steals the creep wave, did end up giving over some Jingu stacks to the Monkey King, but 
Manages to drag it underneath his tower, and it looks like Ohio should be able to get pretty much all of these last hits. Uh, three, and... No, not quite four, but... Still plenty of experience. Almost grabs his level two, though with that 10% EXP nerf, he's just a little bit short. Uh, and it's actually Slark who has not run a pull, but just dragged the creep wave all the way back behind the tower to make sure that the tower doesn't mess up the equilibrium too much. And yeah, it looks like they're going to reunite the creep wave exactly where they want it. Though, <laughs> again, Venomancer sneaks in and does manage to get away with two creeps this time around. Meanwhile, I'm missing first blood, but actually it's just Febby dying to dying to some neutrals. Alright, so harassed mid. It is a very long respawn now. He's got the equivalent respawn of a level 6 hero, but still a free trip back to base and probably <laughs> a bit faster than walking. So... He's going to be all right. Meanwhile, Abaddon's trying to steal creep waves. Everybody's just stealing creep waves in the off lane. Is this, is this the SEA meta now? Abaddon going to take a bit more damage. Doesn't have the shield for a couple of seconds. We'll be able to get it up now. And it looks like they're actually just going to let him go. Weaver still had the Shikuchi on cooldown for a little bit longer. Bouncer Rune's going to pop up. Uh, Monkey King managing to grab one. Fly Solo actually stealing the off lane Bouncer Rune. From Fnatic here. He's been roaming around quite a bit as his Rubik so far this game. Uh, but might be able to make his way down bottom and pick up a kill here on the Venomancer. They planted an Observer Ward over here. Uh, maybe anticipating that the Venomancer is going to be backing up into the jungle. Venno, going to run, make a run for the shrine. Uh, Rubik, I don't know, maybe could have got that kill with the double damage, but instead just going to run for the hills. Doesn't necessarily know where the Bounty Hunter is right now, though I think he's just about to reveal himself up top. So I might get a little bit more confidence from that. In terms of the mid lane, looking pretty even so far. 16 and 1 versus 14 and 3. Supports helping out on both sides. Slark not getting pressured too much on bottom, actually leading the CS chart right now. Good news for him. Monkey King waiting up on the tree line, but. Looks like Fly Solo just wants to go for a pull at the moment, actually. Primal Spring down, they are going to get the slow onto the Venom, managing to get the Gale off, but the Pounce also connects and it looks like this should be your first blood. Ohio gets lifted back, one last touch from Gabby is going to do it. Monkey King even giving him the first blood in preference to getting the, the Jingu up, and now trouble for the Lina. Still hasn't managed to dispel this Flame Guard just yet, and it's doing big damage. That stun, however, will connect. Still chasing forward, Salve gets immediately cancelled. But Monkey King is now on the case. And this could actually be trouble for Qo. A couple more auto attacks. One nuke doesn't actually land. And he will just be able to limp himself away. Lena actually has to be careful. I don't know. Is this shrine already been used? Oh, shrine's already been used, so. Lena's gonna have to he head all the way back to base. Supports acting as an escort, it looks like. Come uh, so someone's asking about who's participating in the SEA qualifiers for this. I can give you a list. Uh, we did actually have a team change today, but the complete list of teams is Geek Fam, Team Faceless, Execration, WG Unity, Happy Feet, Mineski, and then the two teams that are currently uh, in this match right now. All right, plenty of movement. I mean, it's only been four minutes and thirty seconds, but we've already seen. The Bounty Hunter in pretty much all three lanes. You know, plenty of plenty of pressure, plenty of supports moving around the map. Just the one kill so far. Excellent. And more creep stealing going on from Ana over here. Bebby has level two, has the Crystal Maiden doing, has just picked up a 1-1-1 one, one, one build so far. Venomancer, what's he up to? He's still not picking up any points in Plague Wards, looking like he's not really interested in jungling at all just going to be continuing to put some pressure down on this bottom lane though it's not really working out that well for him two-man rotation over towards the mid lane they were looking for Kiwa, but he's not home at the moment so we're gonna back up but clutch gamers with the aggressive wards they're getting out on the map a little bit earlier to get their vision down as well which could be trouble for uh, could be trouble for Fnatic now that they're coming out to plant their wards but fortunately they have the bounty hunter so Bebby's able to get in pretty deep behind enemy lines and still get some vision down. They are heading over towards mid lane once again. They've got the slow. They catch with the chains. They're also TPing with DJ. He managed to get the Crystal Nova slow. And one more auto attack. Not even needed as he does just burn out. Monkey King does TP in. 
But all he's gonna get is a little bit of experience after that kill and uh, Fnatic even thinking about lining up another dive. Do you need to be somewhat wary of the boundless strike, but at the very least they force him back I'll into tower range. Right. Looks like Lena not going to miss too many of the CS here. Has picked up a double Null Talisman build, just tanking up a little bit. I don't know if this is going to be... If this is actually going to end up being a Veil, or if he's just buying casual Nulls for the time being. Fly Solo gets found by Febby. And will also be brought it down. Alright. Ember not finding the most amazing CS in lane, only 22 and 7, but... Two kills, definitely going to help out his case in terms of the net worth. Uh, this Slark is a little bit scary right now down at the bottom, and I'm feeling like this Venomancer might might just turn into food before too long. Slark manages to loop all the way around, gets a nice pounce, they've got some damage, the Gale gets thrown out. He does have a TP scroll, but the lift is held, and one last auto attack from Fly Solo will do it. Picking up a nice easy kill and making some more progress towards his arcane boots. So lots and lots and lots of give and take right now. Weaver just picking up a ring of health here, it looks like. Uh, Miracle is actually going to be going for the Lincoln Sphere, it looks like, as his item decision, so... You know, there is stuff to block this game, for sure. But this is going to slow down the overall pace for him, and because of that, slow down the overall pace of the game for Fnatic, and... I feel like they're going to have to start moving around before too long, just to... create a bit of space for this Venomancer to actually catch back up, especially with the build that he's going, still just maxing out the... Maxing out the Gale. Big four-man rotation making its way down bot, but the Radiant Scan does actually detect the smoke. And so Gabby's just gonna run for it. Does he have his ultimate? He doesn't have enough mana left. Needs one more point, but still getting body blocked up. Chased forward, and the Remnant will finish him off. Even with that beautiful scan, they will still knock the Slark down a peg. And Fnatic knowing exactly who they needed to target. Slark by far the most farmed hero. Radiance well, not by far, definitely on top of the net worth right now. Weaver managing to survive the combo on mid just barely. The wand saves him and manages to get the time lapse off. Oh, that's rough. Didn't quite have the level 7, only just Radiance skilling up the fourth point in Dragon Slave now. Alright. They're gonna catch a little bit of a break. They're gonna drop the full Venomancer combo onto the Slark, but he manages to make it into the trees. Can't dispel everything, but does at least get rid of the Gale, which is a significant portion of the damage. Meanwhile, QO is just being QO and cutting waves right now. Primal Spring down. Tree Dance back up. Looks like Monkey King just gonna be A okay. Still scouting things out a little bit around here. Jump forward, trying to cut down the trees is QO, but. Monkey King still finding his opportunity now. They've got the lift. He's got 17 wand charge. Just going to pop that running forward with the root, but there are four heroes surrounding him, and one more auto attack will do it. Nice Gale connecting onto three, but can they actually help out the Venomancer here? Are there any stuns left? Looks like there aren't, and he's going to get out of there. However, Febby detected with the dust, and looks like he'll actually end up being the secondary kill. As a big rotation makes his way down. Gabby drops extremely low off of that. There's an observer ward all the way back here, in fact, which they have not been able to catch with their sentry, so that's a bit of a nuisance for the Slark. Radiance top tower and does just need to back into the tree line to heal up, but almost has has his treads now once he gets to the side shop. Febby is once again rotating down towards bottom. They see the Monkey King making his way over. Might be able to do something about him here. They've also got the Crystal Maiden Radiance coming in. Oh, they get the hit, but it's right as he jumps up onto the tree and jumped in a little bit deeper. Only the one Tango on Febby. Oh, this is not good for him. He gets dusted again. They do have the Ember Spirit jumping in once more. They get the stun. They bring down Febby. Ember's still fighting. Does have the Flame Guard now, but needs to be careful. Just ends up being the two position fours traded. Well, Rubik is actually just farming mid quite happily. A little bit of a dive up top, but Abaddon still has his ultimate ready to go, so he's going to be just fine. Yeah, so kind of figuring out what the ward situation is here. So looks like they might be able to get the D ward. Monkey King coming in. And he's got it. Nice. This will come in handy. So Clutch Gamers with a one kill lead at the moment, little bit of a net worth lead, little bit of an experience lead. Miracle still just farming away. 
I mean, he is a is a renowned split push player, so it's not too surprising to see this. Venomancer just going to get popped again on bottom. Is this ultimate going to be enough to grab him a kill? Monkey King's ticking pretty low. I'm missing another kill of mid. There's just too much stuff going on right now. All right, Monkey King just going to end up being denied. Gabby's a okay. He's got his regen to keep him up. Fly solo. Going to try and put some damage on the Weaver here, but I think Marika a little bit too tanky. With the Lena dead, looks like Hua will be able to get some damage into this Radiant tier 1 tower on the mid lane. Crystal Maiden is just freezing fielding to grab a bit of farm over Radiant's here. Top as the denied. top tower will end up Radiant's being denied. Dire scan, seeing if anyone's TPing into this tree line right now. And Lena is on her way in. Boundless Strike managing to connect, setting up for the stun. Big trouble for Kua and he gets popped. Fly solo with the stolen Shikuchi, also going to chase a little bit further forward. Can he find Febby is the question. No dust this time around in the Monkey King, so... Looks like Febby will be able to escape. And just back and forth, non-stop this game. What's the Abaddon doing in terms of items? Looks like he's just rushing towards a Vlad's right now. Lina is just going to be going back for the Bloodstone here. Nothing too shocking. Oh, Weaver... Might have been looking for the courier, but spots the clutch gamer's support, so he'll just run himself out. I mean, the, the Venno is harassing him. Kuo jumping forward, gonna look for the chains perhaps, but didn't quite have the range. Almost has his veil picked up. Definitely a nice item to have when you've got the Venomancer and the and the Crystal Maiden. And, you know, not to mention the the bounty hunter on your team. Has Weaver gone for the Shikuchi damage? No, he's just going for the strength. Tanking up a little bit more. Fanatic making their way down. Taking out this tier 1 tower. Looks like that last hit Radiant's should be enough to get that tower. Veil of Discord online. And Clutch Gamer is a little bit slow Daria's to respond, but they are going to start pushing their own tier 1 tower up on the top side of the map. Gabby just farming in the meantime, but does get scouted out by Febby. Still has plenty of mana, and there's... A TP location nearby for his team to help out. Realizing that he's being scouted Dyer's now, perhaps. Is under the Radiant scan just checking that there isn't any movement from Fnatic to try and defend this tier 1 tower. So it looks like instead, they're going to keep on 5 manning focus onto the tier 2. Radiant Spark going to look to defend it. Does manage to drag off the creep wave. That's the Monkey King TPing in. He arrives on the scene. Can he get the Boundless Strike off on multiple? He drops the Wukong command. Boundless Strike onto 2. Febby in big trouble. Does get bursted down and fly solo. Still running forward, but now the Ember Spear comes in, gets two-man chains, and that will burst the Rubik instantly. Slark got hit by the ultimate, but no other damage over time on him. So he's going to be A-OK. -okay. Just ends up being a support for support so far. As Fnatic, seeing if they can re-engage. Looks like they are just going to decide against it. Venomancer still just working his way towards a drum. Getting very, very close. So a couple of nice items coming up for the Fnatic side. Still going to be waiting quite a while on this uh, Weaver Lincoln here, But as we're seeing, he can still kind of get involved at the moment. He's got the maxed out Swarm, which is definitely helpful. I guess it's kind of a similar situation for the Lina or the Slark on the Radiant team. They're both still farming their first item, really, but at least they have some spells to contribute here and there. Lina has tanked up quite a bit, gone for the double null and the, and the magic wand, but still only 1k hit points. Which is a little bit scary at the moment. Definitely wants to get that point booster up. Monkey King, level 7. A little bit of a slow start, perhaps, this game, but... Definitely doing well now. And even game, but still plenty of potential for the track to start swinging it back. Uh, well, back into the Fnatic direction. Slark, what's he farming? Still just working his way towards his Shadow Blade, but he is close couple more CS and he'll have it. Meanwhile, well, what's Miracle looking like on the CS chart right now? Up there with the other big farmers so far this game. Just the Lincoln Sphere, such a big item to, to farm. His inventory never looks all that impressive. But the, the rest of this stuff is actually fairly expensive. A Kilo Wand and picking up some treads as well. Jump in on the mid lane. They've actually got the lift up onto the Ember Spirit and Dies out. he just dives in way too deep. I don't even know what Kilo was doing there, but... Maybe just trying to pressure and then get out. His death is going to cost them this tier 1 tower for Dyer's sure. They do have a glyph. Buy them a few more seconds, but... Structures are fortified. I don't know. It seems like 
Rescuo like pressured the Lina and then she just went invis. And then everybody else happened to be there, so you just got chain stunned and died. Alright. Tier 2 bottom, under attack. Ember can rejoin them by t jumping to the mid lane, but it's a bit of an awkward angle to go in. Slark. Shadowblade is scouting. They put the chains onto the Abaddon, but he's still pretty survivable. Gale comes out. They do manage to get a little bit of lockdown on the Slark. Still holding on to his ultimate pretty patiently. Weaver just going to go for the Rubik instead, and looks like he should be the first casualty this fight. That will be a nice track kill for Fnatic, and they're holding their formation right now. The Shrine is down for a little bit, and they continue chasing forward. Abaddon does have another shield to dispel this track. Ember going to be jumping over the top of this fight, looking for the Lina on the back lines, but the rest of the team forced to walk through the Wukong's command, and Febby just can't do it. DJ in big trouble as the Slark now finds him, and Fnatic splitting up do start to hemorrhage a couple of kills. Miracle just going to head back down towards the bottom side where Venomancer is still just chilling over here. Does not have nearly the mobility that the other cores in his team do, so... Looks like he was just kind of... Just kind of sitting down here in the meantime. All right, so a couple of kills, but no towers, just a two for one overall. Track kill probably helping to even that out somewhat. Ember getting close to his blink for his boots of travel, whatever he's going to be going for. We've almost got the ultimate orb picked up for the Weaver. And Abaddon does now have his Vlad. Yeah, the scary hero right now has to be this Slark. He's got a Shadow Blade, he's already working towards his Echo Saber. And they've got amazing Radiant Vision around the place right now for him to just keep finding these random pickoffs. Sees the Crystal Maiden coming through, but knows that she has her entire team behind her and Shadow Blade Duration running out. Does manage to detect this ward up here on the high ground as well. Yep. Ping's right on top of it, so we'll be able to deny Fnatic that vision before too long. Hell, there's even a sentry already over on the Rubik. Unfortunately for poor Rubik, he's been dying a whole lot by getting face rushed in these fights, so still does not have his arcane boots just yet, but the Monkey King doing a little bit better. At least has his, uh, has phase now, and uh, is actually working towards a Midas. After getting that deal where they're gonna go for an immediate smoke, and it looks like Venomancer might just be biting the dust one more time here. This offlane Venom kick has, I think, not really worked out the way that they were hoping. Sure, the, the Poison Nova is undispellable, but... They can get rid of the Gale pretty quickly, and that's a big part of the hero if you're maxing that first. Miracle manning up, but needs to be careful. Should be able to get the time lapse off, but no, the Boundless Strike cancels him. And he will just be brought down. The Rubik is a pittance for Fnatic. They're gonna have to get more. Febby in big trouble. They're still fighting together. They will be able to pop the Monkey King, but that's still just the support. So now the Lina arrives on the scene. Keen for some Bloodstone charges. Three dead so far, and I don't see DJ making it out of this one. He will try and drop the Freezing Field, but Laguna Blade straight to the face. More drops like him down Melton. and Lena easily arrives and picks up two bloodstone charges they only end up losing their two supports Fnatic were just not really ready for that fight I mean Ember was just top the whole time Miracle going in without the rest of the team the Venomancer was already dead I guess they were just trying to capitalize on the fact that he got his ultimate off but there is plenty of sustain on the on the clutch gamers side like the the damage over time isn't actually that scary. The Abaddon just going to be working on a pipe as well to help negate that damage. They don't have a point in the null field just yet, but that's also going to help the situation. And Fnatic just can't seem to get rid of these wards. I don't know if it was the Monkey King or Fly Solo who came over here and got down all this vision, but their vision is amazing, and Fnatic's vision is abysmal. The, the Slark doing an amazing job of alerting his supports to all of the ward placements. Even just gonna come in here, get a couple of free stacks against the Ember Spirit. Can't really kill him, but... Uh, maybe with the Boundless Strike they could have done a little bit more work, however, jumping past. That uh, does end up stunning up the Monkey King. Venno just gonna try and tank up, grabbing a, vita a Vitality Booster now. Weaver almost has the Lincoln Sphere. I mean, it's gonna help him against... The Lift and the Laguna, but Boundless Strike's still going to be a problem. You know, even the Mist Coil's not too bad at just popping that, so... Uh, we'll see. Fabi, Looping his way in on the side, but they do have the Sentry Ward. They get the immediate Lift. He's going to be able to steal the Invis, but still getting tracked. QO now arriving down bottom, but mid and top both being pushed in, and Slark, TP Scroll in hand. 
Ready to join the fight if he's needed, but happy to continue pressuring this tier 2 in the meantime. Monkey King going to be looking to set up for a Wukong's command. Is forced to step down from the trees, however, as the swarm comes through. But now that ability is on cooldown. And didn't actually connect on anyone. A couple of max rank plague wards now chipping away at the building, but they still defend successfully. Weaver's going to be TPing away towards top, fortunately for him. They did not get vision of him as he was TPing there, otherwise that would have been a pretty easy cancel. And Much Gamer's still keen to chase forward, having a little bit of troubles with the scouting information from the Plague Wards. Duo now going to jump in, gets the chains out of the two heroes on the back lines. In fact, Rubik's is still okay. It will be able to drop off the Poison Nova, but the Laguna Blade will slice the Venomancer in half. And Ember Spirit also dropping at the same time. Monkey King jumping a little bit deeper in. Does have the dust ready to go and the Orb of Venom. Fevy just going to turn around and try and fight, but I don't think that's going to work. The Jingu stacks are up now. DJ, can he get that last little proc? We'll be able to. All right, they managed to turn that kill around. Crystal Maiden coming in pretty big. Oh. Oh. Poor Bounty Hunter just ends up being one more free Bloodstone charge. God, the Radiant have some great Sentry Wards down. They got this Sentry Ward, which kind of saved the Rubik initially as Febby popped out of the trees. They've... Got this ward over here. Oh, and DJ does manage to glimmer himself. Slug's still hunting for this kill, but looks like he's gonna be okay. Over on the other side of the map, we do have Miracle split pushing away. But Abaddon here to kind of laugh in his face and just hold the wave back. And in terms of an overall lead, we're now looking about a 4k radiant advantage. Oh my god, the experience is ridiculous. Almost 7.5k. And Clutch Gamer is definitely splitting up the map a bit better now. The Slark getting really big. Level 16 on him, level 17 on the Lina. She's got her Shadow Blade as well, so... Fnatic at this point probably feeling like they have to start... You know, they have to 5-man to avoid getting picked off, but... It's... it's not easy. You know, they're not even really winning these 5-on-5 these five five fights, because not only are these heroes getting pickoffs, but they're also pushing waves extremely quickly. They spot the Weaver, they do manage to pop his Lincolns, and now the Boundless Strike catches him blind. Fortunately, he will be able to time-lapse away, still needs another Shikuchi. Monkey King still hot on pursuit, but the rest of the team a little bit too slow, won't be able to catch up. So Miracle does survive, but that's time-lapse on cooldown for 40 seconds. Febby just working his way towards a Solar Crest right now. Is anyone buying a Solar Crest for the Clutch Gamer's side? No, not really. Rubik stole the time-lapse, I don't know if that's going to help him that much, but... Maybe we'll see some cute plays there. And Fnatic going to be going for yet another Lincoln Sphere, so... I guess this is their solution to... Avoiding the lockdown from Clutch, but... I mean, they can still get hit by the Boundless Strike into a Light Strike Array, and... None of that's going to be blocked by the... by the Lincolns. Bounty Hunter doing a little bit of farming over here as well. Bottom lane, they have managed to get the ultimate over onto the Monkey King, but I think it's actually the Venomancer who's in trouble. Can they stop this Ember Spirit TP in? It looks like they might not be able to, and the Monkey King can't even get his ultimate off. Now, gonna head into the trees. Does manage to get it down. Can they burst him in time? He's healing up with the Jingu. He's also getting some heals off the Abad, and the shield is there as well. They finally finish him off, but the Laguna, as the Lina arrives, will kill the Ember Spirit. DJ's on the run now. Rubik, hunting. This DJ does manage to juke down, but unfortunately for him does not have a TP scroll right now, and they're still hunting for him. Pings from the Monkey King, looks like he realizes what's going on. Are they going to check? Double damage Slark on the case. Alright, DJ, what kind of jukes do you have? Alright, they're they are not good enough jukes. Oh, Glimmer, head back into the trees. Top tower is under and they top figured him out once again. Maybe not. Maybe not. Have they given up? He's got another Glimmer Cape if Fly Solo comes back in here. Oh, wait, does he know? Alright, now he knows, but DJ's just gonna go for the kill! He gets the Freezing Field and he finishes him off! Unfortunately, no track from Febby. Can DJ still get out of here alive? That's the question. The Monkey King's now respawned. The Lina finds her. The Bandless Strike into the Light Strike Array will end up being a kill. So. Poor old Crystal Maiden just gets converted into some Bloodstone Charges. 
they are going to try and do some damage to this Lina, but she's damn tanky. She's got the stun off already. She's going to Laguna Blade the Bounty Hunter in the face. Looks like she will get bursted. Monkey King also trying to jump in. Where is the rest of the team right now? Slark is pushing over on the mid lane. He does manage to sidestep the swarm and... They still want this kill, but there's a big Radiant Creep Wave. He needs to be careful about how he uses the Searing Chains. The Bandle Strike was not used. Nice interrupt there from QO, but the Lina's already back. And she's got the Chain Stun. Ember, can he survive? Side of Fist to buy a few more seconds, but the auto attacks are too much. Miracle's on the run, but there is a Slark. Hot on his tail. Is Shikuchi gonna wear off soon? Has he been spotted? No, looks like we'll be able to make it into the trees. And TP over to his shrine. The, the game is getting chaotic, and... Net worth not really moving that much. There hasn't been a building that's fallen for a little while. This tier two top is extremely low. Uh, Fnatic realized that. Probably head over and head over and deny it. Weaver at least picking up some damage now. Does have the diffusal blade. Bebby still clawing his way towards the solar crest. But Sark has a BKB. He is looking insanely scary. Another glimmer away from the Crystal Maiden. DJ now has the second point up in the freezing field, so he needs to be a little bit more careful about how he uses his mana. It is 400 mana just for the one spell, so pretty much only has one cast of each of his other two abilities, uh, other than the Arcane Aura regen. Alright, Fnatic are going for Roche. No Solar Crest, but let's see if the Swarm plus the Medallion is going to be enough to do this. Miracle is tanking it just to make sure that that Swarm Beetle survives a little bit longer and it looks like clutch gamer is not really realizing what's going on they are being dragged over towards the pit by the rest of the fanatic side and this isn't dropping fast enough fly solo is he suspicious gabby actually going to be jumping over onto qo does manage to get up onto the high ground the roshan still happening underneath their noses can they get in here in time they drop the bandle strike the ages is still on the ground oh no what a disaster. They got the Roshan last hit, but they just couldn't pick up the Aegis. Miracle and Febby already dead. This time around, DJ's jukes are not going to be enough to get him a kill. They take him out. This tier 2 tower is still not denied, so that's just going to be one more victory for Clutch Gamers here as they continue their march towards the top lane. Kyo hasn't backed up just yet. We'll be TPing in now, but... With an Aegis on their Slark, it doesn't look like too difficult of a siege. The Abaddon, plenty of shields and heals. Nice Boundless Strike and end up catching under two. He does manage to jump a little bit further away, but Venomancer, not quite so lucky. The pipes actually blocking a lot of the damage right now, along with the Null Field, and the Fade Vault finishes off Febby. Clutch Gamers are just running over Fnatic. They're ticking down a little bit to the Venomancer ulti, but again, the sustain is there. Abaddon still has his ult. Lina with a 17 charge wand. They will glyph, and that's going to buy them enough time to get the Weaver back on the field. The Bandle Strike does not connect. Nicely played by the Ember to dodge it. But now the Wukong's command comes in, and the Laguna Blade will finish him up. Jump forward from Gabby. Really wants this DJ kill. Glimmer's on cooldown. He was trying to save his allies a little bit earlier. Does still manage to kite back to the tier 4 tower, however. Alright, anyway. That's chilly. Is that a taunt? Am I... Am I hearing things? Let's just check. Surely we can just check if he has the, the new taunt. Yeah, it must just be the new taunt. Alright. Wasn't looking at him, but that's a lane of racks gone. That's a shrine gone. There's still an Aegis in the Slark's inventory. Oh my god, Fnatic put everything on the line to go for that Roshan, and it was just an utter disaster. Like, what do they even do now? Venomancer's bought a Blade Mail. They're down 14.4k net worth. The Weaver just going to be going for a BKB. I, I still don't know how much these Lincoln Spheres have really done for Fnatic. They've bought two of them, but it doesn't really feel like it's keeping them alive. And Rubik doesn't even really mind just using spell steal to pop them. I mean, it is a relatively long cooldown, but if he gets a lift, it feels like whoever he gets the lift off on just dies. Bounty Hunter had a bit of an impact in the earlier stages of the game, but they just never really got that never really got that snowball rolling. And like I talked about, I really thought that the point of having the the Crystal Maiden with the Weaver was to avoid having to buy the, the Lincolns, but... Alright, we'll see. They do have two really good split-pushing heroes in the Weaver and the Ember Spirit, so might be able to take a step back and slow down the pace of this game a little bit. The 
We got a gem on Gabby. All right, well, these dire wards are not long for this world. Fanatic's vision continuing to get restricted at every turn. And we are going to have a quick pause from Cure. He's just going for a Radiance right now. Um, looks like we got some kind of a bug. And we have at least one bug. But Alright, Lena also has a BKB. How long is her BKB? Still 10 seconds? Slark's BKB, what, 9 seconds? Oh lordy. And Age is still up for a minute and a half. I feel like Clutch Gamers could quite easily just go for a 5-man push if they wanted, but it looks like they feel like they have to deal with the, the split push for the time being. We got a Lotus Orb up on the Abaddon, so... The spells for the Bounty Hunter track for days. Rubik also TPing in. Weaver... They don't really have the chain stun, so... Miracle really just making space right now while the rest of his team pushes out top. A little bit difficult. They get the Light Strike Array randomly. He will be able to time-lapse himself across. And... Alright. Looks like he'll be okay. Yep. Jump onto the Venno. They will force out the Slark ultimate. Gabby doesn't want to hit the Blade Mail too much, but he still wants this kill. Looks like there's nobody on Fnatic really coming in to help out Ohio. He does actually jump up out of the high ground. Is this ultimate going to kill him? Is this just the Aegis dead? Ooh, he's low, but the Abaddon's going to save him. I mean, could have popped the BKB as well. Aegis is about to pop anyway. What, 30 seconds? Not a huge deal, and he forced out the Venomancer ultimate. Now they're gonna head up onto the high ground. They've got that Abaddon passive, helping them get to work. They get the Boundless Strike over onto the Venno. He's just making space in the front line. Slark does get hit by the Frostbite. Still just fighting away. Needs to be careful not to lose the Aegis at an inopportune moment. They might not have this time down to the second, uh, given the way that they picked up the Aegis. So, might just be wise to back up. And looks like that was probably the right decision. Slark also getting pretty close to his Scotty, which he's now gonna make some room for. Lena going to be Radiance going for a Mjolnir. Cool. Already has picked up some boots of travel as well. And a 20 charge bloodstone, so... Uh, going to be back to the fight very, very quickly. They do finally manage to take out this tier 2 tower on the bottom side of the map, Fnatic, but... How much more can they do? The, the problem that they're going to run into is that Lena can just sit here. Lena can sit here, and then she can just boot to travel to her team when they're in position for a push, so... Unless Fnatic can somehow jump in... On the, uh, you know, jump in outside of the base. I don't know what they can really do. This Venomancer pick just seems like, seems a bit weird. If they'd been on the front foot all game, I guess it would have been alright, but since they haven't been, they've run into this problem where they just have no disables, really. Like, the Ember Spirit has to initiate for them, and he really doesn't want to do that. They got an Aghanim Scepter on the Lina now as well, so probably... What are we, one shot territory for the, the Crystal Maiden? She's got a thousand health. It's an 850 pure damage nuke. Close enough. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Alright. Still, Miracle getting Dyer's some trades here and there. He's got his BKB attack. up now, Dyer's so we'll be able to man fight a little bit more in these upcoming team fights. But how they're gonna kill this Slark, I'm not sure. They do get the backdoor protection disabled through the middle lane. Disabled through the bottom lane, rather. So, take out the tier 3. Look to jump in. They're going to try and force the Venomancer ultimate without committing too much. Lena also running in here with the double BKBs get popped. And they don't care in the slightest about the BKB or about the Blade Mail or about the Venomancer ultimate. Fly Solo in some trouble on the back lines. They're focusing him, but that's the Weaver's BKB and the triple remnant from the Ember just to find that one kill. The Monkey King is still denying them access to the base with the ultimate, but they have lost the Lena. Venomancer coming back into this fight. He bought back. Will actually be able to grab that kill on the monkey Abaddon. Still fighting. Slark rejoining this fight, looking for the kill on QO. Buys a few more seconds, but still gets finished off as the ultimate is popped. Miracle trying to stand his ground and fight. How much more can he really do? The Abaddon actually getting slowed down. Doesn't have his ultimate anymore. Gabby looking to re-engage also. And looks like Abaddon's just going to die here. Can he get the deny? Doesn't even have enough mana left in the tank for that. They do still have the gem over on the Slark, so Miracle having to be a little bit careful about how he engages, and with that, Fnatic actually get a successful defense. They get a 4 for four for 3, plus a buyback. 
Well, this could be bad. Slark finds the pounce. Immediate time lapse away. And Miracle will, will continue with his day. Alright, so 10 second BKB from the Weaver. Definitely doing some work. Uh, it may be a little bit weird from the Lena to just run up onto the high ground like that. Uh, I think also the Mana Burn from the Weaver actually did quite a bit of work against the Abad in that fight. Like he died, but he still had his items on, you know, items off cooldown, all that kind of stuff. Nice pounce actually gonna find the courier from Gabby. That was sick. Going for a basher now. Excellent. Oh, Abyssal Blade definitely going to be helpful. Maybe that's where the Lincoln Spheres start becoming a little bit more helpful for Fnatic. And, alright. Miracle just buying up a, a Maelstrom here. We do have a basher finally on the Monkey King. Took him a little bit longer to farm this than I would have expected, but... Oh, he went back for a Solar Crest, right? Okay, so he's got the basher now. That's a huge increase in the power of his ultimate. Uh, Roshan is back up, so should be able to go for that. There isn't really a whole lot of Fnatic vision on the map. They did manage to get a couple of wards over on the top side, uh, which have avoided being dewarded by the Slark for the time being, but they're going to head into the pit. Solar Crest going to make this pretty easy, and Fnatic, what can they get as a trade? They've almost got the Radiance up for the Ember Spirit, so his damage is going to go up quite a bit because of that, but we now have a two-life Slark Ready to siege some buildings. Nope. GJ trying to plant some cheeky high ground wards that are a little bit more difficult to get rid of, but little did he know that he was standing right on top of a ward himself. He'll be able to pop the ghost and the glimmer, but the Laguna Blade is more than enough to kill him. Miracle once again going to try and come in from the back lines here, but needs to be careful. Boundless Strike's going to catch him. Do they have the chain stun? He gets lifted after the time lapse. Can they kill him off? He pops the BKB, but he gets bashed, and he'll be killed off. And they get the bonus finishing off that ward. Miracle's dead for 80 seconds, and that might just be Mega Creeps now. No buyback for a thousand gold. There is no way that he's getting that. QO gonna do his best to defend. Remnanting away. Just chipping. Does have a couple of shrines to work with as well, but Clutch Gamer is just playing the objective right now. From their perspective, they're trying to force out the Weaver buyback, but I think at this point they're gonna realize that he doesn't have it. And that they can just go for the jugular. Tier 3 tower falling quickly. There is still a gulf available. They're going to throw down the Monkey King ulti for a little bit of zoning power. Slark's still just going to continue hitting the building. The tier 3 is dead. So no bonus armor for the Fnatic side anymore. They're standing around their shrine trying to fight. DJ going to let it go with the ultimate. But is that going to be enough? It won't be. They've already lost QO. They're going to lose all 5. And they're going to be losing game 1 here. In this best of 3 as clutch gamers. Just... I don't know. I, I think Fnatic outdrafted themselves a little bit here. Or, or maybe it's the, the, the way that they played the Weaver was a little bit disconnected with the expectations of what their lineup is going to do because they have to win the early game. They've got a Venomancer offlane and they've got a Bounty Hunter. If they don't win the early game, then I really don't know what they do. You know, they, they, were, they were getting pressured and then the two Shadow Blades came up and it seemed like once the two Shadow Blades came up, they just didn't have anything left because they couldn't win teamfights. They couldn't win the split push war because the Shadowblade heroes were going to pick them off. And 